His tone was light, but his words confirmed my fears. I had left the frying pan, yes, but I was now in the fire. Perhaps that decision is not ours to make. Huh? Then, there was someone in charge of these two. The conversation seemed to suggest that they were part of an organization of some sort. As I thought about it, I remembered hearing stories of a group of men with blue coats. Uh -huh. My thoughts were interrupted by a dark shape sliding into view. Uh. Oh. I swallowed hard. The moonlight shone off his smooth, dark hair. For reasons I couldn't fathom, in that moment, the light on his hair made me think of fluttery flower petals. Almost as if the cherry trees were blooming out of season. Luck is not your friend tonight. His voice was cold and quiet, like a blade of ice. Blue-white moonlight lit his slender face and shone from the blade he held pointed at my chest. But it wasn't a sword that made my breath catch in my throat. It was his eyes. His dreamy, fierce, and hard eyes, but somewhere behind them. I couldn't catch a glimpse of- I could catch a glimpse of something else. There could be no doubt that he was prepared to kill me, and yet he looked troubled. Not kind- kindness, perhaps mercy? Run, and I will kill you. Do you understand? I nodded. There was no doubt he'd meant every word he said. He stared at me for a moment, then grimaced. With a sigh, he put his sword away. What? I was too surprised to stop myself from speaking, and it became apparent that I wasn't the only one. What? Wait, Hijikata, are you sure about this? This kid saw well everything, this can't be good. As he spoke to the man called Hijikata, his eyes narrowed. The man called Hijikata frowned back at him. Shut up. If you keep that up, you know what we're going to have to do. I wasn't quite sure what they meant, but it was clear enough that what I'd seen was something they wanted to keep hidden. Still, the more they said, the more I understood. Despite the fact that none of us wanted such a thing. I really think this is gonna come back to buy us in the ass if we let this kid go. The way he looked at me made me feel as if he'd read my mind. Perhaps it would be best if I didn't think too hard about things I wasn't supposed to ask about. So we should just kill people so they don't bother us later. No, I'll decide what we're going to do with this kid when we get back. I agree with the commander. If we remain here, we're likely to be seen. Again. The man they called Saito spoke with quiet confidence. He glanced around, possibly looking for other witnesses. Then he looked down at the creature he'd killed, almost as though he'd forgotten the whole or ordeal. If they have this sort of reaction to blood, then they don't seem like they'll be very practical. Damn, I didn't think they'd gotten this bad. He peered down at the corpse, his face an emotionless mask. When he looked back up at his companions, however, his eyes narrowed. As for you, drop the hijikata and commander stuff. You're supposed to be keeping a low profile. What? Come on, you can't be serious. You don't think our blues are a bit of a giveaway already? He was right. Even I had heard stories about a gang of cruel men in blue coats who cut people down in the streets, but... No, no, don't think. Ignore them. I did my best to be stern with myself, but it came out sounding more pleading than commanding. My mind swirled with thoughts and worries. I was being drawn into their world. A world where there is nothing strange in carrying on a normal conversation in the dead of the night, with corpses for company. Like a tea party. Dun dun dun. <laughs> What shall we do with the bodies, then? There doesn't seem to be any physical signs, but... Hiji caught a thought for a moment before he spoke. To take their blues, Yamizake can deal with the rest. As you wish. Another man caught down in the street, huh? Doing a great job, aren't we? He gave a derisive bark of laughter. So long as we keep our mouths shut, I don't think anyone will connect us with this. He looked directly at me when he spoke. Also, 